Hey everyone, if you happen to be building a Zenith CH750, whether it's a Stoll or a Cruiser, and decided, like I did, to upgrade the seatbelt system to their new three-point harness, stick around, I'm gonna show you what I did. All right, well, like I said, I'm in the process of upgrading my fuselage here. Um, in doing that, you have to get a couple different brackets and assemblies to go into the roof of the uh, fuselage, the rear fuselage. And it's not exactly an easy task. It's not difficult, but it's, it's not easy. If you have the new Super Duty, that's already, I believe, this is a standard, um, a standard thing, not an option for the seatbelts, but a 750 Cruiser or Stoll, goes from just the uh, lap belt over to one shoulder to this three-point option. So we need some more structure in the rear of the airplane. So what I did is, uh, of course, first and foremost, you have to go through and check in that you've got um, uh, all the inventory, all the nuts, bolts, hardware, and that kind of stuff. Make sure you're not missing anything. And then, of course, you're gonna wanna lay out uh, the dimensions of what you have to, uh, to drill. So let me show you what I did there. All right, so this is the option I'm talking about here, this new type of seatbelt system. And you get these brackets. And where you're putting this, this is the uh, the top view of the fuselage. This is the front, the widest, the widest section here tapering back. That's how you know front uh, to aft, forward and aft. And these are the brackets showing them installed. Now this is a black and white print, so it's a little bit difficult to see. But if you look closely on your instructions, there's a line of rivets that go vertically here. And you're gonna to wanna to pick up that line of rivets and kind of match that up with the row of holes for the rivets in, in here. And I'll show you real quick on the inside. I've got one side, one side done. There's two rows of holes there and you can see that line of rivets that goes up and down will want to match up with that in the uh, the ceiling and the roof all right that being said you can see this dimension here center line and they want you to go 230 millimeters out well fyi if you're thinking that you count the rivets and that center row will be dead center, you'd be wrong. <laughs> it's off by about 15 to 20 millimeters. And you can actually measure uh, this row to this row, and then this row to that row, and you'll find that it's off just a little bit. But bottom line, what you're trying to accomplish, and what I've learned that you're trying to accomplish here, is that you are wanting to pick up, again, this row of rivets here and match that to the bracket on the on the ceiling here but more importantly to match it up to this here and keeping good edge distance so I don't know if this is just my kit that has this row of rivets off just a little bit but in case yours is the same as mine go ahead and take a quick measurement and check that out and see if that uh, row of centerline rivets is off by about 10 to 15 or 15 to 20 millimeters. Um, but just don't use that as a, a dead center reference. And here's the thing, in all honesty, if you measure the center, which I've done, and then you measure from center right to left for that 230, on my particular one, it does not actually land on that vertical row of rivets. So, which is what you want, because you want to pick up, there's an L angle behind that bulkhead that you're wanting to pick up uh, and have this bracket um, rivet to. So regardless if this is off by 10 or 15, maybe even 20 millimeters to one side or the other, you're gonna to want to pick up that L angle behind the bulkhead. So move forward like I am and just make sure that you're picking up the rivets on that bracket. And I'll show you another tip I, I learned working through this. Hey guys, one second. Hey guys, you've probably seen me traveling a whole lot these days. What makes all this possible, getting this original aviation content, is sponsors like these. 
Dynon Avionics at DynonAvionics.com. AirTech Coatings at AirTechCoatings.com. Airworks at AirWorksAviation.com. Avionation at AvionationUSA.com. Check the description below for links to these great companies. And visit our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics, affiliate products, aviation merchandise, and so much more. If you like these videos that we are producing weekly, give that like button a click and engage all notifications so you don't miss a single episode. All right, so here's the dimension that they want you to pick up here, the 230 millimeters and it's on the line of holes, right? So what you wanna do, here's a line of holes in this, this piece here, right? The thing is, if you were to draw a line up on the ceiling, like you would typically do, and then move this you know, back and forth to line up to try to find a hole, it's such a small, this, this has been drilled out now to I think 40. It didn't start out that way. So if you're to try to line up a hole to find a line, it's going to be really difficult. So what I'm suggesting is if you measure from the center hole to the edge, you've got 10 millimeters, right? It's going to be a lot easier for you to measure over 10 millimeters and have that be your reference line along this flange and slide this over to a line before you drill. And that's what I did up in the top here. I measured where the rivet line is and the holes would be, and I measured over to the left 10 millimeters, and that's my reference line for actually holding it in place. Now, another really quick tip if you don't have another set of hands that, uh, in your shop to help you hold this up, get a really big uh, clamp there, go ahead and put on the bracket and this clamp is strong enough that it will actually hold it in place and I was able to slide this right or left to my, to my line and then be able to hold the other end up tightly with my other hand and drill the first hole so that's how you can get this started and the reason why you want to clamp it to that side is you've got some play here you can see the gap right there there's a bracket that has not been drilled yet, you can tell. So you have some play at that end. At this end, this is already pre-drilled. So there is no play with that. So you want that as tight as you possibly can get it. On the other side, I accidentally slipped when I was drilling and went closer to that bulkhead. So I ended up making a, a spacer to fill the gap. But this time around, I learned that you can use this clamp and make it nice and tight and flush. All right, so when you're doing this, it's a lot like other things in the build process. You kind of have to sequence and look a few steps ahead of your, uh, your moves before you back yourself into a corner. This is no different. And especially this being on a, a flat area and I've got angles, you have to really look at it because you literally not paint yourself into a corner, but rivet yourself into a corner, right? Because you can't get a rivet gun at that much of an angle and actually be flat against the rivet. So keep that in mind. This is the angle is open, so you can fit a rivet gun in there, no problem. And Clico is no problem. So keep that in mind when you're doing this. What I have done is, um, you know, go ahead and drill this in place, Clico this in place. This is already there, so you can go ahead and drill these to place and get this all locked in. And over here, um, this, is a, this is the part that you have to pay attention to as far as the sequence goes. And the other challenging part to this, being this is an aftermarket option or after the fact, um, is that you have to draw out a couple of holes, a couple of rivets in the back bulkhead. I think it's about three. Um, this is not, this part I think is pre-drilled, but this is not. And then you have to create all these, it's a row of six, and then 14. So 20 in total holes on that. And let me tell you how I went about doing that. All right, so this is kind of a old trick. A lot of you have probably used this before with a piece of cardboard or, 
or a hard stock paper. But essentially, if you take a piece of metal and go ahead and drill it to the proper size, Clico it to the existing hole, then tape, make the tape act as a hinge, right? Then you're gonna move this out of the way, slide your piece of metal or bracket that you're wanting to drill through, obviously this is already drilled, and then put this back over it. This will locate the hole so you can drill straight through this into your bracket. And then you only need to pick up I think there was three original holes back here that you have to drill out. One, two, three. And then you'll double up on spacing. But so you have to drill three of these rivets out, locate a hole, make sure this bracket is pushed up all the way into the corner and centered left to right. And then that will lock in your other holes. And then from there, you just have to space out um, six rivets here and a total of 14 in this area there. So going back to the order of operations and the sequence I was mentioning earlier, this you can pretty much go ahead and rivet because again, the angle is open. So you can get Clicos in there and rivet gun. This end, however, you literally paint yourself or rivet yourself into a corner if you just put this up there and try to rivet it. So this is my answer, my fix to this. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do here is rivet this bracket to this piece now. And looking at it, you're saying, well, Brian, I, I can't fit anything in there. Yes, you can, metal bends. So simply bend this open so you can rivet that down. And then when you flip this over, these holes are gonna be far enough down that you're still gonna be able to have a little bit of an angle to get in there to rivet, Clico and rivet. And if it's off just a, a hair, that's gonna be okay. So that's my answer to that. So you have all the rivets facing the same way. I know some people probably have access to their hell hole and go into their back uh, tail and rivet the top ones from the other side and that's fine too. To me, this would just look better and this is pretty simple to do. All right, so the next thing to do, of course, is to jump up on top of the airplane and start drilling holes down into it. So what I did to make this a little bit easier than trying to reach up and around, it's hard to see on the other side of that uh, tunnel, is to go ahead and do some starter holes, do your initial first drill holes through the bottom, and then transfer your Clicos to the top, and then go to the next size, and then the final size on the very top. So it's easier to drill down than it is to drill up. Once that is all to final size, uh, the next thing is there to, there's a bracket, all right, there's a, there's a bracket that goes on top and picks up the holes that are already in there. Everything will match up just fine. This is already to final size. So you literally just rivet in place. Um, the hole is, is not this big to start with, right? So it's uh, just a kind of a starter, a starter hole. And you'll place that down on top of the fuselage. And then there's another trick, uh, which I think Mark Pensestetler showed with a piece of aluminum, but you can also do it with a piece of wood. All right, so going back to wood shop shop for a minute, uh, I had just a scrap piece of two by four laying around and I went ahead and drilled it to the same size that the starter hole was on this. Cause again, we're just trying to align holes and make another starter hole. So I took this over to the drill press, drilled this down so it's nice, square and even. Then I went on top of the fuselage, click of this in place, and then just held this over. You can start the drill bit through the block of wood first so you can actually see it come out the other side to line up the holes. Once you do that, go ahead and you know, line that up and then drill through. And then you have a nice and uh, perpendicular aligned hole. All right, so now you've got this starter hole, but it's in line. Then you go to the, the, the bigger bits. And I would highly recommend, you can either use a unibit and just go from the top side and then up from the bottom to get to the proper size or find your your end result final size drill bit and step up only a couple drill bit sizes at a time the reason being is these drill bits especially the bigger you go will grab metal very easily and very quickly and when it does that especially if you're doing this at high speed it's going to want to pull and almost you know rip the metal towards you right so it's better to go incrementally just a few drill bit sizes at a time 
until you get to your final size. I think I went through about four or five different sizes before I went to my final drill bit size. And that allows you to have this really big bolt they supply that uh, will hold the, the harness up there behind your neck. Another thing to point out briefly if you're doing this as a retro fit versus again if you're doing a, a super duty this is already done but cruiser or stole you're gonna have this line of rivets which holds an L angle which you have to drill out before you start all this and that'll be cut and spliced to be able to clear uh, the, the U-channel bracket that goes through there. That being said, underneath this bracket, if I can lift it, okay, there's some existing holes that go with that rivet line. These existing holes, you're not going to be able to put a rivet in because it's going to end up popping this up off the surface, right? So, you need to come up with some way because at some point in time, water might be able to get here and under, even if you paint it and all that. So I, I'm gonna fill this with some type of gasket maker or something, these two holes, and then right before I put this on, put that down there. Or if you guys have any other suggestions on, on how to fix that little issue, could um, I could put a flush rivet in there and that would seal the hole up. Let me know what your uh, ideas are on that. All right, then after all that, of course, lastly, what you have to do is go back and deburr either side of the hole and touch up the edges and make everything that's sharp dull and scuff it up and prime it. Now on this particular one, because of the shape of it and where it's at, and just in case, after I'm washing this or if I go visit one of you and it starts to rain and I have to leave it outside, um, just so it doesn't, if, if water gets into it and pulls it up, I'm going to go ahead and get a good coat of primer in the inside of that and then also do a good coat of paint and hopefully if the plane's not sitting exactly level, it's going to drain out the either the back or the front or around the bolt hole if water happens to get in there. I'm just saying go ahead and try to protect that as much as possible being that you've got this big gaping hole for a bolt that's going in the top of your roof uh, of your airplane. So I just, just to try to cover all basis there as far as corrosion. I know these are made of 6061T6, which is highly um, effective against corrosion protection, but you don't want to have standing water on aluminum if possible. All right, well that was just a quick little tech tip or whatnot that I've, I've learned uh, in the process of doing this and I thought I would share it really quickly with you all. A little update on my project. Um, things look a little bit apart right now. Well, that's because I'm getting ready to paint. This is actually one of the final things that I want to do as an add-on, but I want to get it done and in there so I can prime and paint everything together. After that, things are going to really start speeding up. It's time to just start throwing things into the interior of this and final installation. That was recommended to me by several people that have built these is just go ahead and get the priming and painting done um, so you don't have to so you don't have to waste the time of installing everything, making sure it, it does this or that, and then take everything out and prep it. This way I can put it all in at once and be done with it and move on to the next thing. All right, and lastly, this is not the official announcement, but those of you that have been following along for the last couple of years, coming up, this will be the third year we're gonna be doing the 31 day build challenge in December, right? So I'll be challenging you to do something every single day in the month of December to get your kit, get your project really further along for the next year. So be on the lookout for that video coming up soon. Until then, just build it.